The name Leah has two meanings. Number one, Ela these. Number two, Haloy indeed. Leah represents letters of thought, Alma discassia. And that is why it says that Yaakov despised her because Yaakov wanted that this intellect should be revealed. And Leah kept this a secret. Leah also alludes to the first letter, Hey, in the name of God. And that alludes also to the world of Bina, the world of understanding. The Torah tells us that Lavan had two daughters. And the Medrash tells us and comments that people would say, Lavan has a sister, Rivka, and Rivka has two sons. And therefore, the two sons will marry the two daughters. The older son to the older daughter, and the younger son to the younger daughter. So Esau, being the older son, would marry Leah, the older daughter. And Yaakov, being the younger son, would marry Rachel, the younger daughter. Because of this, Leah began to cry, and she would cry all the time and pray to God, I don't want to marry Esau. This is the Medrash. Leah, if you add up the letters of Leah, Lamid, Aleph, and Hey, and you spell it out completely. So the Lamid is spelled Lamid Mem Dalit, and the Aleph is Aleph Lamid Pei, and the Hey is Hey Yud. The word Leah now equals 200. 200 is the same gematria as the letter Resh. Now, the prophet tells us that Haloi Ach Esav Liyakov. Is it not that Esav is a brother to Jacob? So the word Ach is a brother. If you take the letter Resh of Leah and you connect it to the word Ach, you have the word Acher other gods. Esav wanted to marry Leah and that would solidify his ability to connect with other gods. But really she did not marry Esav. In the end she married Yaakov. Yaakov represents the letter Dalit. Why? Because Esav is the Resh when he marries Leah and Yaakov is the Dalid when he marries Leah. Because Dalid and Reish are really the same thing. They look very similar. The graphic design are two lines. One horizontal, one vertical. The difference is that the Reish has no yud, no dot behind it, and the Dalid does. That dot behind the Reish represents humility. Yaakov was the small one. He was humble. And therefore he represents the letter Dalit. Esav was the big one. And he was arrogant. And therefore he represents the letter Resh, which is 200, compared to the letter Dalit that is only four. But if you take the letter Dalit and you put it next to the letters Ach, brother, you now have the word Echad, one, one God. And that was Yaakov. The one who brought one God to the world. And that is why we are told that on the tefillin, the dalid and the knot in the back of the head, this represents Leah, who is married to Yaakov. And similarly in the Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lekin Hashem Echad, the letter dalid is large. This dalid represents Leah. Furthermore, Leah is made up of three letters, Lamid, Aleph, Hey. Aleph and Hey is six. Leah had six of the twelve tribes. And Lamid is the largest letter in the Aleph base, representing the Hey Gedoyla, the large Hey, the first Hey, in the name of God. Furthermore, we can say that the Aleph, which is one, in the word Leah alludes to Dina, the one girl that Leah had. And then it's read again, Aleph and Hey, which is 1 plus 5 equals 6, alluding to the six sons. What was the Pasuk, or what is the Pasuk for Leah? La Hashem HaYeshua, 
Al Amcha Bechasech Hasela, which means deliverance is God's, and may your blessing be upon your people forever. In this passage, we see two things. Number one is deliverance is God's, and Leah was truly delivered. She was saved. She did not need to marry Esau, but rather she married Yaakov. And furthermore, the passage says, may your blessing be upon your people forever. That is your nation, Israel. She is the one that brought about the majority of the Jewish people. And therefore, this passage is very befitting for a Leah to recite. And so in the merit of Leah, the great matriarch of Israel. We hope and pray to see and understand the depth of the Torah and to truly have the letters of intellect to be able to comprehend the greatness of God.